I know you've got a bunch of fantastic practice pieces from your free motion lying around. Today I've got a great project to use them all up. Let's get started. Congratulations everybody on all the free motion work you've been doing. That's right. I know a lot of you have been following my skills and drills workshops that we have uh, for you. So here's a, again one of those fun samples I did as a free motion and I started working on putting this really cool bag together but then I immediately came up with the problem of what am I going to do on the inside about some raw edges. So today I've created a really fun bag for you to all make up but our real focus is going to be finishing off the edges and some of these easy techniques, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So at any rate, bounce into the description below uh, before we get started and grab your free printable where I've got laid out some of the diagram and description uh, and the measurements of what we're using. And also, you know, I love to experiment on some of the different blocks I'm working on and stuff. It's uh, something I do in some of my free playtime in my sewing room. So I actually narrowed the bag down, made it a little bit smaller, a little bit more manageable for you here. So the bag we're making today is going to use about a 14 and a half by 18 inch panel. So you're going to need a couple of those. And what I actually did is I used this great fabric from Canvas Studio, this color Calypso, which has got this great different amounts of floral, but also some kind of color wash and geometrics. And I love the bubble fabrics in here. So I, again, playing with what will this look like in a quilt, I'm experimenting with these parts and pieces, some half square triangles, and I come up with these shapes and let's make them into a bag. So let's get them put together. I actually have a quilt top, just a mini. We have some batting in here and we have a backing. This was just four of the 10 inch squares put together just to make this nice and easy. Once that was done, I did a little bit of free motion machine quilting, or as you can see here on one of my other samples, I also just did some real basic stitch in the ditch. So however you want to practice, you're just educating yourself and getting your hands used to what we're doing on our big projects to make down these little pieces. Then we're going to trim them down square so we can build out our bag. Okay, we need one more piece for this project. And I got a, a little carried away, so it's already part of my project here. And what that is, is this long strip that I was making, because um, I wanted to do the sides and the bottom and the other side all as one long panel piece. So I was playing with some other little small, fun half square triangles and whatnot as I was in there. So what I've done already for us today is I've put on the first round. I've put on the binding already. I'm going to show you how to do that. And I've come up to this top corner. Now this top corner here, again, I was running long on my strip here. I'm going to trim this off. So the first thing we want to do is we just want to get in here and I really want to get this nice and square. So I'm looking at the lines here, the lines here, all of that, probably some bad cutting management, but I'm just going to cut that nice and square across there. Now I want to show you something that in my samples I ran into and I think I've come up with a great solution for us today. When I stitched the bag, I went around both sides and on the final corner, I came up a bit long. And that was the way I was positioning my fabrics on the machine. I'm going to do a corner cheat as I come around, as I'm showing you right here. And so what happens is I want to make sure that this next panel I put down, I am sewing just as I put on the first panel. So my panel is against the feed dogs. I'm looking up at my outside strap and I just want to take a moment and make sure I've got my right sides together. So here's my inside, it's already bound. So this is right side. I picked my favorite side of my pre-quilt. So this here is in my favorite side. So this is going to go right sides like this. And now I'm coming to the machine and once again I have the panel piece on the feed dogs just like I did on my first go around. And that should really help us come to the corner. Of course, you're welcome to put little pins or some of the quilt clips on each corner if you like. That'll also help a bit. I'm going to backstitch the lock that in and I'm going to start heading down and I'm trying not to put any extra stretch or pull, but the nice thing is, is these have now been quilted so they're a little more stabilized. Here we go. Now as I approach this bottom corner here, I'm looking for kind of my quarter inch mark, almost like I do with my bindings, but I'm not going to do the full back fold. I'm just going to pivot on the corner. So I'm coming to a quarter inch marker. 
I'm gonna take a stitch back to secure and then forward. So that's a nice strong corner. Now I'm gonna take the bag itself, the panel, I'm sliding the panel 90 degrees into my lap and then I'm gonna fold this, that long strap, the sides and the bottom, I'm folding it right on itself. It's not creating any pucker and that's taking about a quarter of an inch out of the side panel but not out of the front. So that's why we need to go this way in both directions. Now I'm coming across here and I'm gonna sew all the way out of that other corner. Okay, so here I am approaching that other corner again. I'm slowing down for that quarter inch, kick a couple to secure it. Backwards, I'm gonna pivot again. I pivot the panel. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check this corner up here and if I've got a little shifting going on, I'm gonna go ahead and use my fingers to pinch them together and I'm gonna encourage this last little bit to come together nice. We have all of this batting and layers in here. So a walking foot is a nice option, but harder to corner with. So that little trick that I just showed you there will work out great. I'm gonna go ahead and lock stitch this at the top as well. And there you can see now we've got a perfect corner as we go all the way around. So that's our solution for that little trick. And now we're gonna get ready to put on our binding. Now to make life easy, I just purchased some of the little mini strips. These are one and a half inch wide strips instead of the two and a half inch wide. So we're gonna use all of this to bind. And uh, just double check, I'm almost positive, but a single 45 inch strip should go all the way around. So I'm just gonna kind of dry fit. Oh, looks like I might be a little short. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that and I'm not even sure. So I'm just gonna quickly bias join these together because that's what we do for the top anyways. So I had one made for the top. We'll see if I need this. How fun. You never know how organized you are until you realize you're not as organized as you think. Even that sentence alone was designed to be less than organized. <laughs> but that didn't take long. Okay, so we did our uh, bias or mitered join right there. I've got my cutter still close and handy, ready to rock. So I'm just gonna cut off that trim, give myself roughly a quarter inch for later. Okay. And now, because I know I have plenty, we're not gonna bother with that selvage. So either side you wanna start on, it's not gonna affect it. So we're just gonna start with what side is going to be the easiest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the raw edge out here on the raw edge right now. We're gonna treat this just like we're doing a quilt. We're gonna do it in two phases. Let me get my edge guide back in place. So I'm just using that same exact quarter inch I did when I put the bag together. I love this, it reinforces our construction. Oop. Got a little excited and yanked that out from underneath the needle. Here we go. Now I'm gonna handle the corner the exact same way on this first lap. So I'm coming down, but I'm gonna sew off cut my thread like I do in a quilt binding situation so that I can actually fold up and back down to bring over the bias. And if that was too quick for you, I have some wonderful bias, excuse me, I should say binding by machine. I'm focused on my seam here. Don't break my concentration. Binding by machine videos where I show you that fold a little closer. But it's a simple binding fold, 45 degree fold. Off the edge, come around, it folds straight up, straight back down. There's a lot of bulk in there. And this again is the inside of your bag or purse. So I'm just doing this so we have no raw edges. It's not a requirement to even finish it if you don't want. But I love this. All right, and I'm gonna come all the way off the top there. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here 
and we're going to fold it and fold it again. Let me see. Let's do that a little bit better for you. That's probably way better. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to fold it in on itself and then I'm going to fold it on itself just like that. And then what I'm going to do, just like I did before, I'm just going to machine stitch that same edge all the way back around and it finishes out just beautiful. We do the same exact thing all the way around the top and then I'm gonna be right back to show you how to put on the handle. Well, hey, welcome back. As I promised, I'm just finishing now putting on the top final edge around the bag. So just like we do with all of our quilt binding, it's super simple and easy, but I love the way these one and a half inch strips finish out the bag. So technically this bag could be used with this on the outside if you wanted. I really like that look myself. Either way, we're ready for the handle now. When I created the handle, again, I was just kind of playing with putting some of my five inch squares together. I used uh, four of them to make the length, so I'm about 20 inches long here. What I want to point out real quick as I've already taken the time to put the binding on both sides, and this is what's gonna be considered the underside. I do have this raw edge right here where I've just folded everything up. So on the other side, I've done the same. I've made sure that both raw edges are folded to the inside of the handle, because now we're gonna put them onto the bag. And where they're gonna go on the bag here is I'm basically just gonna line them up on this side, and they're gonna stitch down with that raw edge. So here's that raw edge, it's gonna go down against the bag and I want to make sure I point this out before I buried it because I was about to this right here that is the seam where the cream colored binding came together so I'm hiding everything right now underneath where I'm placing this first handle you can eyeball it it's roughly a half of an inch from either side now as I come over here we've got a lot of thickness so we're going to make sure we don't push and pull on our threads this is a good way to break threads and needles you want to be careful I'm going to get my edge guide out of the way, get my body comfortable and bring this back in and whoops, I almost, like I said, well, let's make this one with our welting on the outside. We're just going to do it that way because I like it. Make sure though you're sewing this to the outside of your bag. Originally that was going to be the inside, but we're just being creative today here at Man Sewing and we're going to change the design because you can. This is a reversible project. Make sure nothing binds up on that back side there and coming down. And I'm able to just kind of now massage that seam right up underneath that binding like I want, that cream colored binding. And here we go. I'm going to lock stitch it. I'm going to stitch across. And I'm going to lock stitch again. I'm going to cut that thread and then I'm just going to bounce down to this bottom edge and I'm going to do the same exact thing. So now we're securing the handle for strength but also getting that bottom edge to stay down just for design and back stitch. Now all you have to do is the same thing to the other side, but make sure you don't get a twist in your handle. So you just kind of feed it over as we go. If that worked correctly, you're not looking at your raw edge. Bring all of this back in over here. And again, stitching, back stitching, forward right on that same stitch line that I used to fold that edge underneath. Lock stitch, we're gonna finish the bag and the project for today with this last row of top stitching here. And we did it team, fantastic work. Hey, I really wanna thank all of you for subscribing and following along with Man Sewing. I really wanna congratulate all of you for working so hard on your free motion skills and drills practice. I hope you love this project. It's a great way to use up some of those practice pieces you've been using. And as a matter of fact, you know I love my free motion designs and I'm always asking you, what do you wanna see here at Man Sewing? So in the comments below today, let me know. Did you like this use of our free motion practice pieces? We'll see you next time at Man Sewing. Oh, hey, are you still in here? I thought you would have been checking out some of those other great videos. You know, we've got a link there, over there. And hey, don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you never miss a minute of the action. We'll catch you next time at Man Sewing. <laughs>